Shalom. I want to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushar, Bashem, Arachak, Wadash. The one to the elder apostles and bishops, the great millstone that rule well, peace, blessings, and salutations to all the fellow laborers of the hopeful elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, I was watching this uh, video, and this is uh, one of the Sakari groups. And uh, they were going back and forth with this uh, Christian. And, uh, you know, they was edifying him. And then, uh, you know, he had questions for them. And uh, the topic of the Trinity came up. You know, hence you see the title, Trinity Street Debate. And, uh, you know, Jake, you know, was they, that's one of the dogmas that they learned under plantation Christianity is uh, the false Trinity doctrine. You know, they'll get uh, tricked up when they read, you know, verses like John 1, verse 1, and uh, Hebrews uh, 10 and 30, uh, Matthews uh, 28, and I believe like the last verse, you know, they'll go to First John, you know, where it talks about um, the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, and um, they'll try to take the Holy Spirit and turn it into its distinct person and say that that's, you know, that's what forms the, this triune God. And, you know, the Bible doesn't speak of such at all. It's not supported by scripture at all. But um, we know what happened during the Council of Nicaea and, and uh, uh, integrating paganism into you know Christianity, all right. But um, you know, just why you have to you know study the scriptures and know the scriptures, you know. And and you know, I uploaded a lesson that I did, you know, talking about being diligent. You know, if you are like the Church of Berea and you search them scriptures and learn the scriptures, it'll protect you, you know, from being tossed to and fro. You know. You'll stay the course and, 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 you know, continue in the doctrine, you know, that you've learned. Because it's all type of uh, seducing spirits coming with all type of doctrines of devils. So you got to stay rooted and grounded, you know, in this, in this word. So anyway, um, I'm going to play some of this video and then, um, you know, I'm going to do my response because one thing that, these Christians don't really uh, deal with uh, in regards to this topic is why is it that our Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, who they say is, uh, you know, he's equal to the Father, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's known as a God or a, really he's a God. Right, he's not the most high God, and that's the separation. That's the distinction. You're not the he's not the most high God, but he's the firstborn, or right, the first spirit, the first creation of the Most High. All right, but um, what they don't uh, understand is how our Lord, when he came on the scene, we know he came as a man. And what he did in regards to offering him offering himself up as a sacrifice, he became our a great high priest. Now, if he's supposed to be God, how is God offering himself as a sacrifice to himself? A priest, he conducts the service of worship to the Most High. So, how is he? How, how is Yahweh Shai being God, offering himself? All right, as a, as a as a high priest to himself. That would be like saying God serving God. 
You know, and that's just a, a point that I want to make. And you can go to the book of Hebrews and just further expound on that point. And I guarantee you these Christians, you know, they'll have they'll they'll try to go back in the lab and have a huddle. You know, you know, they'll run a probably run a vocab or something to get an explanation on it. You know, but uh, that's a very great point. How could God become a high priest of himself? But anyway, let me uh, play the video. Eight and what verse? Eight twenty seventeen. Oh, two and seventeen. Two and seventeen. So yeah, I know it's Hebrews two. So check this out. Hebrews two and seventeen. Let's see what it says about Christ. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter two. Actually, read from verse sixteen. The book of Hebrews, chapter two, verse sixteen. Uh -huh. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Does God have the same nature of angels as angels? Well, are angel spirits? Yeah. There's a reason why he took a human form. Uh, I didn't ask you that, right? No, no uh, uh, I, but are we, we talk in context. Let's talk context. Oh, that's not context. That's not context. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely context. It's not, brother. So, so let, me, let me learn you something real quick, right? Okay. It says that he took him, took not on him the nature of angels. Angels are spirits. Christ said, God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Christ was a man, right? So it says he took not on him the nature of angels, right? Read on. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Seed of Abraham, the sperma of Abraham, right? Read on. Wherefore, in all things. In what? In all things. In all things. All right, read on. It behoved him to be made like unto his brethren. Who are Christ's brethren? Brother. No, I was, I was waiting for you to finish the verse, though. I'm asking you a question. Who are, who are Christ's brethren? We are, brother? but I was waiting for you to finish the verse. So, so how were you made? I was made by my parents. But by I'm, your parents? So, but I, I, I'm, so just like Christ. I'm, I'm still waiting for you to finish the verse. I, I got though. you, but, but walk with me, brother. I'm yeah, and, let, and let's add to that. Even going back into our law, that it says that the Lord, the Most High, will raise up a prophet like unto thy brethren. Did it not say that? So that's actually a, a good point. Go to Deuteronomy 18. And 15, it says, The Lord thy power will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren. So he was made like unto the brethren. According to what? According to the kinsmen. According to what? The flesh. Because he took he was he took on the, the seed of Abraham, ultimately a seed of David. All right, he was a, a a son of Abraham, Isaac. Well, he was Isaac. All right, he was the son of Abraham, the son of David. So he was of the brethren. He came through the lineage. All right, that we also come through. All right, it says, like unto me, unto him, you shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy power in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord thy power, neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. Okay? Um, let me jump down. It says, And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth. And a lot of the things that the Lord, when he came on the scene, when he did speak, he said, um, basically, I'm I'm sent of the Father. My Father commanded me to say these things. Matter of fact, let me get a quick scripture on that. Let me go to John twelve. Yep, just uh, John 12 and 47 it says, And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And that's, that world is cosmos. So it's talking about Israel. All right. It says, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words have one that judgeth him. 
the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even, I the, even as the father said unto me, so I speak. All right. So that shows you that the Lord was that prophet from among the brethren. That the Lord would put his words into his mouth and, and, and speak to him. All right. So that was a that, that's a good point. Okay. Clearly talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. So that means that he came, you know, in the in the same uh likeness and nature of us. All right, he was an Israelite. He was born into the world just like we were born into the world. All right. But that's not to uh negate his um his 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 power, his preeminence. All right, our, he's still our head. He's our Lord. We're still we we we're, we're up under him. But even he subjects himself to a higher power. So how could he be God? How could he be equal, co-equal with the the most high God? But that's what Christians do. All right, and they, you know, they they read the gospels and then they'll read the writings of Paul and they get you know, crossed up, mixed up. All right, but anyway, let's go back. Okay, but I need, I need you to finish the I, word, right? Brother, okay. first of all, the Bible talks about how the men of the Lord, right, read distinctly in the, in the book of the God, mm -hmm. right, distinctly and gave the sense. So I'm breaking it down. Oh, point no, point. No, no doubt. But like, they, 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 like I said, we talk about context. There's context at the end of the verse. Of, 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 of course, uh, brother, brother. What does the word context mean? Hmm? What does the word context it, mean? It, it, gives, it gives exposition. No, what does the word context mean? It gives exposition. That's not what the word context means. What the, what it means with the text. That's what it means. I'm reading the I text, mean, so I'm reading in context, okay. right? So it says that Christ was made in all things. It behooves him to be made like unto his brethren. I asked you, who are Christ's brethren? You said we are, right? The children of Israel are his brethren. And I asked you, how were you made? You said your mother and father. So was Christ. It would behoove him to be made like unto his brethren in all things. Read on. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest uh -huh. in things pertaining to God. Uh -huh. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. That part. For in that he himself has suffered. He himself suffered. How can he suffer if he wasn't a man, right? He suffered, right? Read on. Being tempted. He is able to succor them that are tempted. He's able to succor. He can relate to us, right? right? Because he's a man just how we were men. So so you said John 1 and 1. Let's go to John no, no, 1 and 1. Let's finish this real quick. I mean, listen, I, I mean. Now let's deal with, but let's deal with the point of the fact that the Lord had to, you know, take on the, the 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 nature of man so that he can be tempted and go through the sufferings and take away the infirmities of, of us because ultimately he was going to be the high priest, all right, which was an upgrade from the Levitical or Aaronic um, priesthood, all right? That's what the Hebrew, the book of Hebrews go in, in depth to the priesthood. All right, in which, you know, once you come into this truth under our Lord Yahweh Shai, you're under a new priesthood. You're not under the, the Aaronic um, Levitical priesthood. All right. Um, Hebrews 4 and verse 14, and it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahweh Shai, the son of the Most High God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. All right, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, Yahweh Shai, he became that great high priest who passed on in, in, into the heavens to sit upon the right hand of the Most High God. Where's the Trinity in that? 
You can't be a high priest of, of, of God for the nation and then become God. <laughs> you don't know. He's, but he's the son of the Most High. That's why he had that special ability to reconcile the nation of Israel, all right, with his own blood. Okay? Without having to sacrifice animals and, and, and things of that such. All right, so explain that. When you look up, let's look up this word high priest. Strong's G, 749. Archierus. Archierus. And it says here, chief priest, high priest, the high priest, these comprise in addition to one holding the high priestly office, both those who had previously discharged it and although disposed continue to have great power in the state, as well as the members of the families from which high priests were created, provided that they had much influence in public affairs. It says, used of Yahweh Shai because by undergoing a bloody death, he offered himself as an exp exp expiatory sacrifice to the Most High. So how is God offering himself as a sacrifice to God, make that make sense. Because the, the, the priests were doing a service to the Most High, it's a form of worship. All right. So you being a sacrifice, you making yourself lesser than the Most High God. All right. Because you're, you're using yourself to worship the Most High God in a form of a priestly duty. So this Trinity doctrine doesn't make any sense. All right. It says, and has entered into the heavenly sanctuary where he continually intercedes on our behalf. Okay. So, yeah. All right. And then you go to Hebrews 7. And I'm going to jump down. And this is, uh, I'm going to start at verse 14. It says, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake concern, nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. All right. So he's how could you be God and priest at the same time? A priest offers sacrifices. It, 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 it conducts the, the, the service of worship to a higher power. You can't be a priest and be God. But he was a God in, in, in a sense of being the son of the most high God. All right. And we're under we're sons of the most high, too, but under. His 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 first begotten son Yahweh Shai. Okay. It says, "For there is verily a, a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitable thereof, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto the Most High. And as much as not without an oath he was made priest, for those priests were made without an oath, but this was." This, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Yahweh made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth, continueth ever have an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is also a he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto the Most High by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Okay? And that's what he does. He makes intercession for his, his people. You know, like, like a priest. We just don't need uh, the offering up of uh, animals for atonement. All right? He became that, that un unblemished lamb. All right? It says... For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, 
undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who need him not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Okay. So how could he be God and, and then offer up, uh, offer up himself as a sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's? Now, we know the Lord did not sin in that in that body, in that flesh. But what sins, you know, what was his uh, sins? Do you ever question that? Because that's what the high priest did. They would offer for their own sins first and then for the, the rest of the people. Make an intercession for uh, the people. And then when you read in uh, 2 Samuel 7 about, all right, the prophecy of Yahweh, but... Talking about uh, Solomon, he was he had to be um, uh, uh, visited with the stripes of men because Solomon he, he he sinned, but he wasn't chastened with the stripes of men. So who did the who who took on that that chas that chastisement? Yahweh shy because he was Solomon. All right, but anyway, let me finish this verse. It says, For the law make of men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law make of the son who is consecrated forevermore. Okay, and then you can read Hebrews 9, Hebrews 10, it all goes into it. So that's another point to make when dealing with this Trinity uh, debate or this Trinity uh, doctrine. All right, if, if 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 he's part of this triune God and he's co-equal with the Most High God, well, why does he have to offer himself as as a sacrifice unto God if he is God? It, it doesn't make any sense. So, you know, I, I was just watching this, and you know, it was just something to go into, you know, for edification's sake. All right, and these brothers, they was actually, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, it was, it was edifying. I'm not gonna lie, you know, even though we disagree with these dudes, like, you know, these two young Jakes here, you could tell that they're being misled by their leadership because they out here uh, doing the work with their heads covered, and we know the scriptures say, you know, we're not supposed to uh, pray, prophesy with our heads uh, covered. You out there thinking you honoring your head, but you're dishonoring him. But that goes back to their leadership. You know, they they might very well be sincere, but they're being um, misled. So that go, that falls back on uh, Alizar and 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 the uh, Ka. All right, and the Lord will deal with them dudes, man. He'll probably save some of the dudes in their camp, but but deal with with them because they're misleading them. But anyway, you know, I was want to go into that. You know, Lord willing, this is edifying. I'm give all praise, glory, and honor to you. I was shy. And to the next lesson, shalom.